Marilyn, this is my son, Danny. Hi. Hi. Oh, go ahead. I'll see you tomorrow. Walk her out, Dan? Oh. It doesn't have to. Sure. Hey, Danny, what are you studying? Contemporary American government. Really? Can I ask you something? Uh, I hope I can answer. If you were going to meet the President of the United States, what would you talk about? Of course, if you like sports, uh, we usually have a pickup game of uh, touch football on Saturday. It's usually quite fun. Thanks, <laughs> Brandy. Mr. President? Yes. Isn't the massive buildup of USAID and the dispatch of thousands of advisors into South Vietnam a direct violation of the Geneva Accords? <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, trouble is we, we are violating the Geneva Agreement. Uh, not as much as the North Vietnamese are, but uh, violating them nevertheless. So whatever we do has to be done with a certain amount of uh, secrecy. And of course, there's always an element of uh, danger in that, isn't there? All the things you've done, the battles that you've won, the way you deal with... What's the matter, honey? You're wearing my dress. That dress costs $12,000, you bitch. Is that the sort of language a first lady uses? I don't think so. But first ladies don't look like whores. They don't act like whores. They stink like whores. Ah! do this to me. I have to be on stage right now. This is the biggest moment of my life. Can't you see that you're just going to ruin everything if you go out there looking like a high-priced slut? You have to wear something simple, something elegant, something befitting the wife of a president. Jack likes me to look sexy. He says it gets rid of the pain in his back. Yeah, right. This is better on me anyway. You're too fat to wear it. Haven't you read? Jackie only weighs 12 pounds. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. You only read Dostoevsky, or is it Tolstoy? Can't you forget about Jackie? It's just a political marriage. He doesn't love her. He never sticks his hand up her dress like he does to me. You think you are so grand. The president's whore. How many women do you think he has? Isn't this what you wanted? You're the one who wanted the nice clothes and the money and the power. I did this for you. Bullshit. You've never done anything for me. I'm going to do something for you. Do you. What the hell is going on? Marilyn, you were supposed to be on stage an hour ago. What did you take? What did you take? Take anything, Peter. Nothing. I swear that's the problem. Okay. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Oh, happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. to hear another one, huh? Ooh. Honey, what on earth did you do to this dress? I've had to sew a whole new seam way up the front, and it was plenty tight to begin with. You know, I may have to open up a slit in the back just so you can walk. I'm sorry, Hazel. I can't find Sidney Gillerup anywhere. Somebody said he left about a half an hour ago. He's probably halfway to Idlewild by now. The only hairstyle still hanging around backstage is Mickey Song. He's the guy who does the Kennedys. Oh, well, I sure as hell don't want to look like Jackie. You asked him to come in. 
Hey, you tell him I want to look just like Jackie. <laughs> In the history of show business, in fact, there has been no one female who has meant so much, who's done more. Yeah. Mr. President, the late Marilyn Monroe. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday. To you. The president's concerned. We're all concerned, in fact, that um, your involvement with him has become a little too public for comfort, and especially since your performance at the birthday gala. But you were the one who asked me to sing happy birthday to him. And you, you telephone the president from your dressing room when other people are present. And you put these phone calls through the Fox switchboard. Now, the family cannot and will not tolerate this level of indiscretion. He's going to marry me, Bobby. No. I don't believe the president ever gave you any reason to think that. So now I have to ask you not to attempt to contact him in any way. Now he believes it's the best thing for him and it's the best thing for America. And personally, I, I think he's crazy. Listen, I'd, uh, I'd like to give you my private phone number. This will put you right through to my desk at the Justice Department. I'm sorry, Marilyn. But they can't fire me. I've never been fired before in my life. I had to promise them that you'd be on the set on time every morning. Well, you've worked exactly four of the last 21 days. Every man, woman, and child in America saw you singing happy birthday to the president when you told me you were homesick with a virus. Ah, oh, honey, you're all out of chances. But I was ill, and you know that I was. So Liz Taylor can get sick and I can't, is that it? Every time she sneezes, they spend $4 million to break down the set and move them to a warmer climate. And her arms are fat. Oh, Henry, her arms are so fat. <laughs> I make millions for them, and this is how they treat me? Fucking Weinstein, fucking bastard, Judas. No, he's out to get me. They're all out to get me, especially that stupid, no talent over the hill, washed up cooker. What do you mean? Of course you can. You're the Attorney General of the United States, for Christ's sakes. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> 